Uh, PAR basically explains that. The P stands for problem, the A stands for action, and the R stands for result. Now, the important part to remember is that the problem should not be the major part of your answer. Problem is just supposed to be the framework for why you took the action that you took. Action should take longer than the problem, but also shouldn't take up the majority of the time. But the result, as in what you learn from it and the effect that you caused, should be the main focus of your answers. You might be able to use it in certain circumstances, not others. Like if you're talking about, for example, things you're passionate about, this doesn't work. But if you're talking about, say, how you helped out the community, this might be applicable. So I think that might be useful to you know remember. P-A-R, problem, action, result. Thank you very much, Kyle. That was great insight. Uh, we shouldn't have stopped the recording now that I think about it. I, I recorded it, so it's fine. Oh, you did record it? <laughs> I did. I clicked the recording. Okay, Perfect. cool, cool. If yeah. not, we'll just have Kyle do it again, and we'll just act surprised like we had never heard of it before. <laughs> what? Yeah. P-A-R? What is that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but um, yeah, is there anyone else have any like advice on how you guys went about your personal insights? I did honestly I just wrote it out that's like not what you should do you should definitely like I think it's helpful to like um, create an outline of like the main ideas you want to portray yourself as like an applicant um, and then one thing I was told like for these types of questions or just personal essay questions in general when you're trying to sell yourself to the school you want to think about it in terms of like if you were the one reviewing the application what would you look for in a potential applicant if the roles were reversed Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that's like super important to convey in like these types of questions is um, to basically convey that um, the experiences that you're having like um, basically describe them in as much detail as possible because you want to provide that like um, like these experiences that you're describing in response to the question are actually legitimate um, if you provide specific examples or details then they could get a better idea of who you are as an applicant um, which is like super important because they're reviewing like I want to say like thousands of applications so at some point I imagine that like the reviewer is uh reading so many essays right and the ones that are going to stand out in their mind are the ones that have the most detail um then allow them to remember like who you are as a person and what like your specific story is uh, pertaining to that question so personalizing it as much as you can is like super important so yeah that's yeah and also um, I do want to make note, uh, now that I'm applying to grad school, I'm getting tips on how to like, uh, make my, uh, statement of purpose, like how to polish it. So I learned something that can definitely apply to PIQs. So it's a thing called the rule of six. So once you're done writing, edit it six times, but like go to different, to six different people. So go to your best friend. Uh, go to your mom, go to your cousin, a sister, and just find six different people and have them look over it and read it and have them edit it. And then every single time, like you're gonna get to a more polished version. So that's called the rule of six and just make use of it. It'll definitely help. I agree. Editing it as many times as you can. Oh yes. Uh, I, her, your cousin's name is Berlin, right? I call her Berlin. You call her, everyone calls her Berlin? Uh, people call her Marie. I don't know. Her name is Maria Berlin, but I, we grew up calling her Berlin, but her name legally is Maria. I don't, Berlin, okay. what do you want like, people to, what do you want people to call yeah, you? Yeah, because she raised her hand. She has a question. Uh oh. Hello? Okay. Yes, we can hear you. So basically my friends call me and like school calls me Maria and family calls me Belen. But since Alondra's here, you guys could just call me Belen. So it could okay. be either. Okay, but call me that we were having is, do you recommend answering all eight questions or um, do you just recommend just answering four questions that you're actually passionate about writing? I, in my opinion, uh, I think about it like in terms of like how much effort you want to put into it. Um, so if you find four that stand out the most to you and you know you can like speak upon like specific experiences, um, that's what I did. So I, I looked at, out of the eight, like which four did I think I could write like the best um, essay for those questions. 
I mean, if you want, um, I feel like it'd be safe also, like um, if one of them doesn't pan out, for example, like you're unsure, I think I like wrote upon five or like, yeah, I chose five specifically and I wrote um, about them. And then over time, like I would go back, like a week or later, I would go back and I would look at my responses and see, okay, out of which the, out of uh, these five, which ones are the like actual four best that I think um, make the most sense or sound the best. Um, so I feel like it just ultimately depends upon you, how you want to go about it. Um, I don't know, were you thinking about doing all eight or did you want to go more to like four or five? Um, probably like five. Because I, I already know, like, um, which questions are calling my attention and, like, what I want to write about. Um, but also, I've heard that people recommend writing all eight and then narrow, narrowing them down. But I think I'm going to go with, like, answering five. Yeah, because, like, there was some, like, one or two questions where I, I don't have, like, an answer to it. So I don't know how I could write upon it. And I felt like it was just a waste of time for me um, if I didn't have something that pertained to that question. I don't know. What about you guys? Well, how did you guys, um, Alondra and Nad, when you guys wrote on uh, these questions? Did you did you answer all eight? No, <laughs> a waste of time. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, okay. Like I know we're all busy people, and it's like there was no way we could have written those eight, you know. So what I did is I just picked the I picked four, not five. I picked the four that I was like I know exactly what I'm gonna write about, and then I just wrote those, and then from there. I had, I did the rule of six sort of thing, but back then I didn't know that's what it was called. Um, and I went to my teachers, I went to my college counselor, my best friend, uh, and then just had them look over it. And then from there, I uh, like polished it and stuff. So yeah, I didn't do all eight. Uh, so I did four. And I put it my all, I put my all into those. What about you, Ned? I did four, because, <laughs> um... Yeah, just I, I just did four. Um, I was already scared looking at eight. I was like, oh no. Um, yeah, I just I just did four too. Did you have another question, Belen? Hello. Is it? Oh. Okay, so basically the rule of six. How would that work virtually? Since. Um, we're not able to like communicate with our teachers like very easily. How would that work? That is a very great question. So the way that you can go across it is you can make like a Google doc and share it to people that you trust. So you can, well, first get in contact with them. Like you're not just going to send it to them, you know, like let's say you want to send it to your science teacher. You can be like, Hey, uh, Mr. Gonzalez, I'm going to be writing about science for my, uh, this question for my personal insight questions for UCs. Would you mind taking a look over it and be really respectful. So you want to like tell them that you like appreciate them and all that jazz. And you can just be like, um, I would really love it if I can get your input on my question and then have them be like, have them respond to you first. And then from there, you can send them uh, like the link to the Google Doc and then they can just go over it and stuff. You can do that. Uh, that's a good way to tackle it. Does anyone else have any ideas on how to go across it? Um, I actually had an idea on that. Make sure to uh, tell them to use comments. I'm pretty sure that's a function that is available on Google Docs. I know for sure you can do it on Word, but it might be available on Google Docs. It's better for them to not actually erase what you wrote, but show you what they want to change. That way you can second guess it for yourself and maybe write it in a way that's worded better for you. Because if you just let them make changes, you're not going to know what changed. Good advice. I have a quick suggestion. Whoa, I forgot this was still my virtual background. <laughs> Um, but just like for, I mean, I didn't apply to UCs, but I did apply to LMU, which was a private, so it made me have to make a personal statement. Um, but with sharing docs, I recommend having like a, like a safe copy for yourself. Like, let's say you give it to your teacher and this teacher accidentally presses delete on everything. Um, when you share this, just make sure you have your own safe copy for yourself and then send them that copy, like just in case, like you never know, right? Um, just to kind of save yourself and you don't want to go through like the whole like headache and heartbreak of 
your statements being deleted or somehow really messed up or lost or something like that. So that's just my little tip. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Liz. And also I do wanna make a little distinction. Um, when you are applying to college, make sure that you have like an email that's just for college and it has to be a professional sounding email. Don't make the mistake that I did. I applied to my UCs with karatekid.uyoa and that was, I mean, I got in, but it was really embarrassing. So don't let yourself go through that embarrassment. Okay, like make a good sounding email and use that. Can I add something? Also, hi. Um, I would say um, be true to yourself. So if you share it with Mr. Gonzalez, right? And this dude is like, oh, you should change this or I suggest this, da 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 you don't have to change it. Um, you can always get a second opinion. You can get a third opinion. Um, if you really do not like what he has to say or feel like it's not you, you don't have to do it. Because I feel like for me, um, I changed some things in one of my statements um, because I was like, oh, you know, like this person has the experience, this person has the wisdom. So I did it, but it didn't feel like me. Um, so yeah, that's it. If I could piggyback off of that, that's actually a thought I had when we were going through the eight questions in general. I know that there's probably a moral hazard involved in, you see that there's a, you know, helping the community box. So you feel like, wow, that one's going to make me look like a really good person if I answer that one. But if it's not you, don't answer it. I strongly recommend write about things that you're passionate about because it's pretty easy to tell when someone's just making things up or inflating the truth to like an extreme extent. Just look through the questions and find the ones that most apply to you. If you really feel like they apply to you, then I guarantee the answer that you're going to put out is going to be better than one that you didn't actually do and you're just grasping at straws. That's a good point. You guys both made good points. 10 out of 10 advice. Exactly. This is why we love you guys and we, we're very appreciative of having you guys around. Um, and I do want to give you a quick reminder, uh, not necessarily about personal insight questions, just in general. The application process can be very stressful and we know that, we've been through it. And we just want to remind you guys that you are bright people and you have it in you. Just take it day by day. Don't stress out too much about it because I remember I was stressing out so much about it, like it took a toll on my health. Just remember to take care of yourselves, your mental, your physical, your emotional, your spiritual too. And remember that like you'll get through it. So, you know, put in the time. It's all about like allocating time. Don't wait until the last minute. You're gonna be great. You're gonna, you're gonna get into the schools you want. We're gonna manifest this, you know? And yeah, so just that little reminder. And we're here for you in any aspect and in any way, whether you need us to help you with your personal insights, like we can be part of your rule of six. That's what we want, you know? Um, so yeah, reach out to us with anything that you need help with. That's where we're here. Yeah, um, going off of what Alondra said, uh, you know, we are here to help you all. And so, um, like I mentioned earlier, please utilize that um, MOH spreadsheet um, because you can get advice from all 11 of us, 11 of us. <laughs> and um, we all have different, um, we can all add different, um, you know, um, things into it. You know what I mean? Um, but I also want to echo what Liz said um, about like, don't lose your voice in that in the application because I remember applying uh you know I was just like I have to sound like this so that they can think I'm an impressive candidate um you know and I think sometimes well I can like for me I think I got lost in it and I was just like I think I just lost um, my voice at some point in the application where I was just like this isn't um really what I wanted to and to even like portray or to to write about you know what I mean so while you have some people that may um have like good intentions in um 
in making your application stand out, I think um, it's important to think about like, to what extent is that stand out? You know, like um, uh, you want to like, wa want to really like just put yourself out there, you know what I mean? Um, so I know how it is um, at these UCs. Um, for me applying, I was like, oh my gosh, they're going to read, I'm scared. Um, you know what I mean? Um, but, you know, we're here for you and we're here to help you throughout the process and making it easier um, because I know these applications are due soon. Uh, I think November came by super quick. It was like yesterday was like Halloween or whatever. <laughs> and so um, we're definitely just here to make the process so much easier for you and, um, you know, um, making sure that your voice is still your voice in the applications because, you know, um, you know, some of these students that are very affluent be, um, you know, making some stuff up, <laughs> Lori Lachlan. Um, but yeah, um, <laughs> you got this and um, we are, we're definitely here for you to, and to help you out in, in everything in any way that we possibly can. Thank you, Nad, for that. Um, yes, come to our office hours. We are Definitely willing to help. I am definitely also willing to help with some PIQs because um, why not? Um, like I, I'm writing my personal statements for grad school and I've had many, many people look at my application, my, my application, sorry, my questions or my essays, should I say? And then they're like telling me like, I'm getting like similar advice from people. So I realized that like some advice like is common amongst like a bunch of these uh, essays anyways. Um, so definitely come to my office hours, go to everybody's office hours because we all have different different uh, perspectives and strengths um, in terms of looking at these uh, questions. So yeah, um, we are here to help guys. Question, what is PIQ? Personal insight question. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a little abbreviation. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's okay. I'm used to calling them personal statements too. Like yeah, even, <laughs> even yeah. when they changed it to PIQs, I was like, personal statements. <laughs> like, I don't know. I just got used to it. <laughs> yeah, people like, like, um, so it's all good. I was like, am I supposed to know that? Like, can we block her out so it doesn't, she doesn't hear that. <laughs> but, um, okay. So Belen, right? Um, there's two of them. So it's Belen and then Paola is with Belen right now. They're working on their college apps together. Oh, nice. Okay. Did that, was that kind of helpful or do you guys have any more questions? Do you feel a little better? Um, how are you guys feeling? Hello? <laughs> yeah, um, after this PowerPoint, I think we kind of have like an idea of what to write. So after this, we're gonna start, start like, uh, what does that word go? <laughs> Brainstorming. Brainstorming. But we kind of have an idea of what, like, um, what questions we want to write. Oh, yeah. yay. Okay. Yay. Cool. Glad it was helpful. So glad to hear that. And just remember to use examples, a lot of them. Um, well, not all of them. You know what we mean. Like examples, but like describe them really, really well. And yeah, if you guys have any questions, like we said, we're open to help at any moment and we're here for you. We want to see you succeed and we know that you will. Can I ask a random question? Um, can I give my mentee my phone number or, or can we not? Because it's, it's okay if it's not, I just... Yeah, good <laughs> question uh, <laughs> i i um i think email would probably be best or um if if we can get them on slack that'd be great too um because okay. that's that's one of the ways we'll be communicating or if they're on group me as well um because we have uh group me i um you could use that too um so yeah okay thank you yeah, uh, because um, um, so like GroupMe is kind of like similar to like texting, but it's through an app and it doesn't, you don't know the person's phone number, but you, but you can send direct messages to them. 
Um, so I definitely recommend um, using GroupMe. Um, Slack, I think I like think about in terms of like more like Twitter in a way, um, but like with our own specific like program, um, you can send direct messages on there as well. But I think GroupMe is better for like, um, it's like a, a substitute for texting in my opinion without phone number. So yeah, definitely get on that. Um, and encourage your mentee to sign up for that too if they're not already signed up. Okay, thank you. Does anybody have any more questions, comments, concerns? No. I would just like to thank uh, everyone who came out today. Uh, thank you for spending a little bit of your Sunday with us. And we hope that this has eased uh, the application process just a little bit. So thank you. And uh, we hope that you have a great rest of your day. Yes, uh, <laughs> thank you uh, for coming out. And if you didn't, uh, hope you uh, can join us next time or, you know, just look at the YouTube video. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, uh, we hope this uh, workshop helped you out um, and, and stuff. Um, like I mentioned earlier, um, go ahead and go to our MOHs and, um, you know, don't worry, you got this. Um, you're also, amazing bright uh, you're you're all just just great you know um you got this don't be um i know there's so much pressure and so much like weight probably um on on our on your shoulders about you know the application process and you know um i know how it's, how it's like or how well yeah of uh, being a <laughs> uh, a first gen student you know um that's that's rough but you know um you got this you're you're also so capable of doing uh, all the great things you know um yeah yeah that's all i have to say you got this um we're here for you so then did you have another question hello yes we can hear you um but this question is for for Bella. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Paula. Um, nice to meet you, Brianna. Um, I want to be a pediatrician, right? So I want to go into that um, biology field, but I just wanted to ask, like, is there a specific um, major that would be best for, like, that specific position, like, um, as a pediatrician? Or is it, like, kind of all the same? Yeah. Um, so, like, so you're thinking about, like, the medical school route? Um, yes. Okay. So like the way like people normally go about it um, is that if they know that they want to be like uh, go towards that specific route, they normally pick like a science major usually um, that like because usually the science majors are like designed um, most for the most part, the classes are designed um, that you take to prepare you for uh, those requirements when we're applying to med school. So the classes you take usually for like a science major um, usually overlap with the class requirements you need to apply to med school. But that being said, you don't necessarily need to be like a science major to, um, to fulfill those class requirements to, to, re to apply to med school. So like somebody could be like, um, like a sociology major, right? But the thing is that on top of your classes for sociology, you, to fulfill that major requirement to graduate, you still need to take the uh, classes that are required to apply to medical school. Um, and that includes like biology, chemistry, physics. Um, I'm trying to think of other classes that I can't think of right now. There's, there's a couple, but um, anatomy? yeah, yeah, anatomy. Um, I think my, maybe like a physiology class too. Um, so if you really feel like for example, like sociology is your calling, but like, and you want to study sociology, but then you also want to become a doctor, you can do that. It's just uh, extra, it's an extra course load for sure. Um, I know people that like say a fifth year because of that, um, or for example, like they have so many classes that they completed like uh, requirements in college um, that they can do like in high school, for example. So they're able to do that. Um, but you also have to be aware of like those, like if you do choose one that's not like, uh, biology, for example, or not like science or STEM, that you're going to have to take extra classes. So oh, okay, I got it. Yeah. I have a quick comment. Um, 
uh, let's say like you don't end up going like the biology route or if you do um, I know child development does offer like a lot of courses that are a little bit more sciencey they focus since like you want to say you want to do like pediatrician stuff um, they do have courses on like focus on like the kids like brain development and like body development so maybe keep a lookout for that too like in case you don't go the biology route because I do have some friends in child development that want to be like speech therapists or pediatricians or work at a kid's clinic. Um, their classes are geared, still child development, but still kind of geared more to like the science and health route. So just something to keep in mind. Okay, and then I actually had another question. So pretty much Maria and I were talking about how um, there's like this whole section about awards. Um, so what would be the issue if like, you didn't, re you didn't get awards, like your school just didn't give you anything? Would like that affect anything or? You mean financial aid wise? <clears throat> no, like um, acceptance. Cause I know that there's like for, was it, per, which one is it? Personal take question? For UC, like that, like the section. So basically what she's asking because uh, she had the grades to get like awards, but she didn't receive them. Like, can she like not lie, but like, I don't know, like input it in a way. So what you're asking is, I think it's like, let's say she got like really good grades and she was in like the honor roll, but she didn't necessarily got like a no, like a certificate that said Paula's yeah. in the honor roll. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So no. Oh. I, I wanted to comment on that. So there's this weird period where after you graduate from college, you also don't get your diploma. I have mine like hanging up in front of me. Technically, if you meet all the requirements and the office clears you, but the diploma's in shipping, you're still a college graduate. You still have a bachelor's of science or arts, whatever you got. Um, I think the more important part is that you kept the GPA. And if you can prove it, if you can prove like, hey, I got a 3.5 or above, I'm on X, Y, or Z honor roll. I think that clears it. I mean, if you want, you can just literally put that you did that on a roll and then your GPA, but just make sure you cleared it. Like, don't say it if you didn't get it, but a certificate doesn't equal the award. They're not, you know, the same thing. The certificate is just proof of the award, but it's not the award itself. Yeah, I think it might, I, I want to say it might be on the transcript, not your transcript per se, but like, I think this the schools might have it. Um, like I know for for me on my transcripts it says the GPA and it says like award under it like it says the award you got under under that because of that GPA um so I would probably talk <laughs> uh to to an advisor maybe or try to get that transcript in there um but also yeah yeah uh, what Kyle said what Kyle said. <laughs> I'm actually going to second what Nad said. Call in. It's probably safer to call in and make sure. You don't want to like lie at all. Just make sure that you you like got it. So call in, make sure. Okay, so basically we haven't got into that section of the UC application where it asked about like the awards and stuff like that, but um, I didn't know you, you're supposed to provide proof that you got that award. No? Okay. No. Um, <laughs> it doesn't ask for proof. I think it just like asks you what awards you got. Cause I remember for me uh, in like 10th grade, I got like a uh, sophomore of the year for a key club or something like that. And I put that down for my awards. But I remember that I was like, wait, I don't have the certificate. And I was so scared. And I was like, oh my gosh, what if I go to jail or something? Like what if they find out? And then they're like, Alondra's going to jail. She lied. But like, they never asked for it. Oh. I think, let's say, just make sure that whatever you put that you can back it up. Like Kyle said. So like, let's say you're gonna put that you had, I don't know, uh, principles on a roll. Um, just make sure, like, should they ask in the future? I don't think they will, but should they ask, you can just be like, yeah, well, here are my transcripts. And look, I did make the principles on a roll. I didn't necessarily get like a certificate, but from like going by the rules and all that jazz, I did apply. Like I, I did um, partake in that like section of the school, I guess, like if that makes sense. Does that kind of clear things up a little bit? Yeah, I have another question, but 
Um, I don't know if your school did this, but like they put like weird names on the honor roll. So instead of it saying like honor roll, it was like cum laude mag, something like that. Do I have to provide the specific name or what? You should if you can, because it's really good. Like I got magna. That's really cool to say. Okay. Like definitely put that on any application you get. Yeah, because I think the the scales are there's just cum laude, which is 3.5 or above in most cases. Yeah. Magna cum laude, which is usually benchmarked at 3.75. Again, depends on the school. And then um, I think above that is, or was summa. it four to get, four to get summa, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, four to get summa. So yeah, just make sure to um, verify the system because sometimes they'll do 3.6 and 3.8 instead. But make sure, yeah, it's really good to put on an application if you have that. Okay. Yeah, that, that I second that. It's really, really good. So if you got any of that, like make sure you include that. And also in awards, it doesn't necessarily have to be just like academic awards. It can be like, if you got perfect attendance, because that also talks about you as a person. It tells others that you're reliable, that you're responsible. You showed up to school every single day and you got perfect attendance. Or if for some reason, let's say uh, you got like an award for like uh, volleyball, because I know you guys are in volleyball. Um, you can include that because that also gives like another little aspect of you. It shows that you're not just one thing, that you're well-rounded, you know, because at the end of the day, these applications, the point is they want to get to know you in more ways than just one, you know, so mm -hmm. make sure to include all of those. Okay. And kind of, kind of going back to like the biology stitch, um, so basically we could pick whatever you want because there's not a specific major you have to major in in order to go to med school, correct? Yeah, so um, what I know from that, those specific like majors um, is that um, they basically like the lower divs should be like similar, um, which are like what you need for med school. And then um, the upper divs usually overlap with the requirements for med school as well. Um, so yeah. I don't think there should be like a specific distinction. I think it's more of like what you want to specifically study. Is there any like suggestions like of majors that you would recommend? Um, so like the way that I went about it was like I did biology, like just uh, I was just a biology major because I felt like that was more broad and that would allow me to like, um, you know, take different class because the lower divs that focus on like specific aspects of biology overall, right? So you get like different like tidbits of like um, what biology is specifically. And then from like my, my classes that I was taking, I like narrowed it down in terms of like, okay, which specific portion of biology am I interested in? Um, but regardless, even though if you pick like molecular or just biology, like within that school, you, you should end up taking the same lower div classes. So regardless of which route, if you still take those same classes and one class interests you, um, it shouldn't matter because if that class interests you, then odds are you're gonna to wanna to go for that specific major, if that makes sense. And if you're like interested in a specific portion of biology. Okay. So biology, um, biological science and cell molecular science, they're not quite, a, they're not different. So they don't have as many differences, right? Or do they? Um, the only difference that I know of is that like the classes you would take later on, later on are more focused um, in terms of that specific major. Um, mm -hmm. So, so like the, the classes you would take like in your first or second year, like those biology classes should be, uh, are usually the same. Um, and then later on in like your junior or senior year, which like are your upper division classes, um, they're gonna be more focused to that particular major. So for like at UCLA for biology, um, it's more like ecology and evolution, um, that specific major, whereas like uh, molecular and that molecular biology and all of that is more of like focusing on like developmental biology, um, how cells interact with each other, how they speak with each other, um, the signals they send to each other um, and all of that good jazz. Um, so it's, it, I think regardless of which major you'll pick, um, for those two, if you know, you can always like change. Um, if you like, if you take a class in like it's, it, let's say you're a biology major, and then you take a class that's like a molecular biology class, and then you're like, oh my god, I really love that class. You can switch your major um, at any point. Well, earlier is better, but um, yeah. To follow up, uh, the general rule on that, if you end up switching overall, is 
you'll belong to a department as a specific major and each department has a bunch of majors within it. But the point is that the departments have a base that everyone gets. The majors just split off from there. I actually had another question. Yes. So is there like a specific amount of times you can change your um, major or like you can just keep going? <laughs> You can keep going. I changed it twice. So <laughs> I, I went in as like psychobiology, which I thought was like super cool. I should have stayed that, but it's fine. <laughs> and then I switched to biology because I was like, no, like, I mean, why would I do psychobiology if like, I want to be like, you know, go to med school. So I switched to biology because it made more sense, like logically speaking. Right. Cause it's more science classes, I guess you could say. And then I was like, you know what? Like, uh, biology like is is like not enough for me so I switched to something that was like a blend of like humanities and biology um, and even though like that's not specifically like science um, like well it is science but it's not like pure science um, I knew that it was something that I wanted to do it's something that I was interested in and even though like technically I guess you could say I'm taking fewer science classes in the end, like I knew that I loved that major um, and that that was the right fit for me, regardless of people telling me like, oh, like you're gonna have to take more science classes. Um, you know, it is what it is. At the end of the day, you'll do better in something that you really like and it's worthwhile for sure. Um, so, yeah. Okay, I got it. Also, yeah. another question, but this is kind of like, um, like, I don't know, I guess just in case. So for example, if I applied, to um I don't know let's say like Cal Poly and like Maria said so you have to choose like an alternative major what if like you go in you get into it for the other major you kind of didn't want and then like once you're in like can you change it to the major you originally wanted um is it like is it like drastically different like which uh like um, when I was doing my CSU application, Cal Poly advised, well, they advised me to select an alternative major. So I mm -hmm. selected biology for the main. And then for my alternative, um, biological science was like my, in my options, but like I didn't know what the difference was. So that's why I had like questions regarding it. But um, I think it's kind of basically the same thing. Do they list it as two separate majors? Um. It, it was just like under where it says like submit application under it. It just has like the alternative major. I'm not quite sure if it's two majors, so. Okay, I'll maybe, mm -hmm. maybe it's gonna be a look I into know that. that. I know that sometimes when they ask you for an alternative major, you can actually petition it later on and get into the major you originally wanted. Uh, so like, I know when I was doing my application um well as a transfer student um when i did it um some schools ask for alternative majors and then they give you the opportunity that once you get in to like say that school with your alternative major you can petition it you just have to meet certain requirements um to like get into the major you wanted like i know for ucla if i wanted to if I got into my alternative major and I wanted to petition petition into my the major that I wanted to get into, I think I had had like a three seven GPA or something like that and um, enroll in some of the classes um, for that major. Um, so I know there's that and um, all shoot I forgot my train of thought. Mm, oh well come back to me in a bit but yeah that's that's what I know for for the uh for the alternative major um part Violet oh whoops uh, <laughs> I saw it so late <laughs> I think that's it from us we had a lot of questions sorry <laughs> okay we're here to help, so don't even worry. Ask as many questions as you want. Also, I'd probably look into some of the programs because I know some programs, um, they let you in with that major, but then you have to meet those requirements. And if you don't meet those requirements, you're like kind of 
I think it's like called a selective something. I forgot what it's called. Like I know at Davis, there's some majors that like once you get into, you have to like they they like select. Um, they kind of like make sure that you're like on track or whatever. It's like a I don't know. It's like a whole different thing. So I'd probably look into that too. Um, Look up impacted majors. It's an interesting concept. Some majors are more favored than others, and um, they'll have separate requirements to get into that. So if you're transferring in with a non-impacted major and you're trying to get into an impacted major, it'll be more difficult. If you meet the requirements, you can definitely do it, but um, it'll be more difficult. And then vice versa, if you switch in and you have a non-impacted major and you're trying to get into another non-impacted major, guarantee they're going to approve it. No problem. I have a quick question. How does like impact majors work? Like I thought, well, from what my counselor told me that impacted majors is um, when like a lot of applicants are specifically going into that major and there's no space. So they just label it as an impacted major and people who have the like higher GPAs, they're selected for that one. I think that's like my knowledge of it. So I can tell you specifically how it went for my program because I was part of an impacted major. Um, I'll let anyone else speak on this after because it's probably different school by school and just, you know, probably varies. So if you wanted to do my major, which was accounting at Northridge, it was impacted because it's like one of the few CSUs or it has a pretty good accounting program, like dedicated accounting program. You can go to any business program. You can see like a great business program, say UCLA or uh, I think Cal Poly also has a great business program, but those are general business. That being said, it's one of the few CSUs that has like a great dedicated accounting program. So they would shove us all into the same intermediate class or they would put us all as pre-accountancy first. Basically like you're in the major, but not really, we'll see later. And when you're trying to apply to the first real accounting class, they rank us all by GPA and they'll cut out basically the 180 they can take into the class based on GPA. In our case, it ended up being above 3.2. So it does get a bit competitive sometimes. And anyone who passes that class is admitted to the major, but anyone who doesn't pass that class is not admitted to the major. Uh, so in our case, it was phased in where you can take the pre-major, but you can't get the real major until you meet X requirement. In our case, pass the first intermediate class. And even that, there's a challenge to get in. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> when I when I hear about impacted from like just like classes and majors, I just know that there's like a bunch of people competing for like not that many spots. So that's why it's like you want to be mindful of like, oh, um, that may not be necessarily that you're not like a competitive applicant, but it's like relative to everyone. So odds are like the more people that are applying for that major, um, you're competing with more people and they, they might be uh, more competitive or just as competitive as you. So there's something to think about. But then yet again, um, one thing that like I was told in like um, when I was at Narbonne was that um, based upon like the availability of resources, like within your school, you're only competing against people at your school because it would be unfair for me to be competing against someone who went to like a private high school or something and they had way more resources so they're able they have the resources to excel more than i do right um like private tutoring or something i have no idea but yeah oh, uh, also keep in mind about that hmm. that's a bit wait yeah yeah that answers a lot of our questions because we were about to start um we were actually about to start working on our application. So now we know like what to look out for and like what to research before doing like finalizing everything. We glad love to that. Help. We're gonna do just in time. Go ahead, Bree. I just wanna say glad to help. <laughs> but yeah, that's, yeah pretty, uh, that's pretty much it for <laughs> us. Well, thank, thank you guys very much for joining us today and for all of your questions. Uh, you guys really, like, you participated a lot, so we appreciate that. We appreciate your guys' help, too. <laughs> Wait, did, like, we I have, a, <laughs> have a great day, y'all. <laughs>
I don't I don't know who's in charge of the recording or 